one, we will call the Board of Workshop to order. Our first item on the agenda is the 2012 Newburg and Large City School District Retiree Recognition. I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Weimer. Thank you, Mrs. Spoochek. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Education, uh, Mrs. Spoochek, the Board President, and Mr. Pizzo, the Superintendent of Schools, uh, good evening and welcome to our retirees. I was thinking a moment ago that it's nice to have so many students here with us this evening. Um, as we go through this recognition, that's not generally the case. Normally, we don't have a whole lot of students attending board meetings. Um, but they get to see um, how the district will honor many of the people who have worked in the district for several years here and how much we appreciate the service that they've given to these students. So I think it's nice that some of the kids are here this evening. I'm Mary Ellen Weimer, I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Mr. McElmore is here with me this evening. He's the Executive Director for Human Resources, and uh, Mr. McElmore will, will be reading the names um, of the retirees. This evening is dedicated to the members of the staff who retired during the school year, so anybody that retired since last July 1st, and those who are retiring on June 30th. We want to take a few minutes this evening to acknowledge these very important people who have dedicated themselves and their careers to the youngsters in our school community. We'd like to thank them for their many years of service in the Newburgh and Large City School District and also to wish them a long, a healthy, relaxing, enjoyable, and a well-deserved retirement. The arrangements for this evening are made possible by the combined efforts of the members of the Human Resources Department, in particular Mrs. Terry Kramer, Mr. Andy Calvano from the Food Services Department, and uh, one of our former retirees, Mr. Greg Thompson, who will be taking the pictures this evening. A special thank you to Mr. Lopez from the Newburgh Supervisors and Administrators Association, Patty Van Duzer from the Newburgh Teachers Association, and Joyce Howard from the Civil Service Employees Association, who have graciously provided refreshments for this evening. After we're through with the formal recognition and the pictures have all been taken, Mrs. Kramer and Mrs. Manns will escort the retirees and their families to the superintendent's conference room where there will be some light refreshments for the retirees and their families. This is how we will proceed this evening. This, these directions are for you guys. We ask that each honoree come forward when your name is called and proceed to the front to be acknowledged by the President of the Board, Mrs. Fuchek, and by the Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Pizzo. We would ask that you stay standing up front until all names are called and all honorees have come forward, and then a group picture will be taken with Mr. Pizzo, Mrs. Fuchek, and all the retirees, and then once those pictures are made available to me, I send them to the retirees. So we'll begin by, um, with Mr. McElmore, reading the names of the retirees that um, are being honored this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Eimer. From the administration, Ms. Mary, Mrs. Mary Lou Bosford, Clerk of the Board. Principal Typist, 36 years. <laughs> From Bonville School, Rebecca Pace, Mrs. Rebecca Pace, 11 years. Chestnut Street School, Ms. Gail Clark. <laughs> 32 years. Mr. John Collette, Transportation Coordinator, 9 years. Mr. Paul Mott, Chief Custodian, 26 years.
Foster Town School, Mr. Carmen DeCrosta, uh, school monitor, 11 years. <laughs> Mr. Terry LaRocca, senior custodian, 34 years. <laughs> From Gindy Avenue School, Emma Miranda Gasparini, teacher aide. <laughs> From Gardner Town School, Mr. Wayne Cavalier, cleaner, 10 years. Mr. Bertram George, cleaner, 14 years. Carmen Vasquez Tell, director, 16 years. <laughs> From Heritage Middle School, Miss Anna Landall, 13 years. <laughs> From Horizons, on the Hudson, Mr. Klaus Solomon, 7 years. Ms. Janet Sullinger, 26 years. <laughs> From Meadow Hill School, Melanie Caldwell, 20 years, 21 years. <laughs> Ms. Christine Johnson, TA, 10 years. Ms. Jeanette McTamity, 28 years. <laughs> Ms. Celeste Rio Pina, 23 years. <laughs> From NFA Main Campus, Ms. Betty Austin, 12 years. Maureen Grzybowski, typist, 38 years. <laughs> Stephen Gutkin, 7 years. <laughs> Ms. Sandra Hogan, teacher, 33 years. Diane Hughes, typist, 28 years. <laughs> Ms. Sharon Majori, teacher, 39 years. <laughs> Ms. Sharon Oates, telephone operator, 33 years. Gregory Thompson, Media Tech, 37 years. <laughs> Mr. Peter Copaletti, Principal, 36 years. <laughs> From NFA North Camp. Ms. Donna Sabella, teacher, 33 years. <laughs> From New Windsor School, Ms. Gail Ann Hickey, teacher, 33 years. <laughs> Ms. Kathleen Palella, teacher, 25 years. South Middle School, Ms. Vivian Flowers, typist, 14 years. <laughs> From Temple Hill School, Ms. Patricia Schwartz, teacher, 11 years. <laughs> and Ms. Mary.
Mary Ellen Weissman, teacher, 17 years. Let's honor them on this evening with a great big round of applause.
The next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. <coughs> this evening, we are extremely pleased to recognize a group of students from Newburgh Free Academy who represented the school in our district with honor at the math sessions. Congratulations to them and their parents and teachers for the effort and the time invested in preparing for this competition and for their future. I would like to ask Mrs. Mary Jo Bowden, our district math director, to join us at the podium and help recognize our outstanding students. We will then present a certificate of recognition and have a group picture taken. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Uh, Mrs. Kuchos, members of the board, senior staff, and honored guests, it is my very great pleasure this evening to recognize this year's NFA math team. This year's team qualified for the Do So sectional competition. That Do So League is Duchess, Ulster, Sullivan, and Orange County, and that entire region. And those sectional competitions were held at Bassett College earlier this spring. There were six seniors who were on that team this spring, and we all know what seniors we like. Uh, I have certificates that I will be taking for each for them that I will get into them. But I'd like to read those six names because that's an outstanding achievement and it's a credit to their parents, the teachers who worked with them, the advisors who took the time after school to meet with them and who went with them to all of the meets. And uh, a, a special thank you also to Mr. Nee, he's not here this evening but he's the one who stepped in and went with that team to sectionals at Bassett College. So this was a great honor. We have not had an NFA team who's qualified for that level of sectional competition in a long time. So it's a great honor, and it's, it's certainly an honor for me to, to, uh, to recognize them and to deliver the, the certificates to them from you. Uh, I, I'd like to read their six names. Ryan Garazon, Oscar Fuentes, Christian Jaleski, Dwight Mariano, Jade Nago, and Jimmy Tabana Ayol. And all of you who've been at any of the award ceremonies, you've heard those names. They are outstanding students, and it's a great, great honor to recognize them this evening. Thank you. This evening, we are also recognizing a group of talented students who have an evident love for music and have represented with honor our district at various county-wide ensembles and at events in other states. We are all very proud of the accomplishments of these young musicians, and I would like to invite Mrs. Teresa Brown, Mrs. Julian Cassie, and Mr. Zubis to help us recognize the students and staff who have contributed to their success and to have a group picture taken at this time. Good evening, everyone. This evening, we have a large group of student names that we'll be reading, and they were our representatives at our um, all-county music festivals. Uh, the all-county music festivals consist of four different music festivals, elementary, junior high, senior high, and jazz. And we had representatives within each of the organizations. What will happen is when I read the names of the students, just to give them recognition, um, if they are present, they will come on up and we will get a group picture at the very end for the Oil County. Um, and then, of course, they're free to go into the hallway and eat all that chocolate. <laughs> um, I would also like at this time just to recognize the teachers that have come as well to support their students. Ms. Carlin Flynn from New Windsor, Ms. Karen McCarthy from Hams, Ms. Jody Rodriguez from Temple Hill, almost lost that one, Mr. Chris Udis and Ms. Jillian Cassie from NFA. <laughs> Many of the students, I'm very happy to say, are at home studying or getting ready for their next Practice. 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 Practice.
<laughs> but we would like to recognize them. If you hear your name, please come on up and join. Lane Dingwell, Rebecca Ferguson, David Salazar, Samantha Tucker, Teresa Fisher, Jasmine Abrante, Chastity Acevedo, Sean Asante, Kelly Benedict, Ayana Brooks, and Taylor Brooks, Kiara Carrion, Zachary Conklin, Aiden Connolly, Eliane De Leon, Talia Featherstone, Stone, Tamaya Featherstone, Jana Fryer, Ariel Galavis, Ellie Alampalakis, Jaden Hamilton, Ramon Jimenez, Derek Keenan, Aja McKellar, Christiana Mia, Alex Melendez, Madison Parker, Joe Post, Annie Reed, Jaron Reyes, Ashley Rabot, Naomi Roach, Leah Rosario, Kenyatta Shabazz, Miami Slaughter, Micah Stevens, Sabelle Texterra, Chris Toroman Nides, <laughs> Amanda Tucker, Thomas Vasquez, Natalie Abrams, Zachary Seifer, Riel Anderson, Brigitte, Brigitte Anderson, Julia Despigna, Rebecca Kelson, Deval Patel, Zachary Seifer, Isabella Crisci, Reba Hassan, Olivia McCartney, Brandon Niagro, Manuel Rodriguez, Jackson Sue, Julia Vavernik, Laura Worcester, Miguel Cortez, Ava Dingwell, Angel Lau, Benjamin Seifer, Yeji Zhu, Joseph Forden, Ashley Abrams, Tyler Hawes, Angel Lau, Cassidy Menorick, Manali Patel, Brianna Spencer, Dan Wallace, and Julia Zambito. These are our all county representatives for the music ensemble. So keep them up.
Nationwide Technology Conference. Um, they were uh, about to perform or asked to perform at the Ohio Music Educators Conference. Um, and that was a very big honor because not only were they taken in by a National Technology Conference, but they were also an out-of-state group brought in to perform for them. The members of the Electronic Keyboard Ensemble are Nicholas Horn, Shadrin Broomfeld, Hyeyong Kim, Angel Lau, Shaquille Lewis, Bob Napatel, Maggie Reed, and Benjamin Wagner. And I believe Maggie Reed is here, yes, and Ms. And Ms. Cassie has the plaque that the group did receive for their performance. Madam President, next we have the uh, Armin Damon McCordy and District Architects Report. Good evening, thank you. I'm going to be referring to the um, update that was provided in your packets. I know we've been doing this for the last several months. There's a fair amount of information there, so I thought I could recap this, 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 uh, this information this evening. And then if you had any specific questions, I'd be happy to address those. 
Generally speaking, we are preparing for another summer of construction. And that's not specifically outlined in the report. We're going to be very busy at GAMS again this summer. We are currently meeting with the building administrators. We do have our contract movers set up to actually start doing some work tomorrow to prepare the building. So the uh, materials that need to be relocated so the construction can start once students and staff leave uh, this next Friday, we'll be in good shape to begin our work. With regard to some of the other projects that are ongoing, at South Mill School, we are ramping up the electrical work that was done to support the program changes there. We have some exterior door replacement that will take place this summer. And I have asked uh, the architects to go back through again starting um, the Monday following summer recess to update their punch list on all of the items that uh, might remain in the classrooms where we have done window replacements. There are a fair number of things to, that need to be done. The contractor hasn't finished his work yet, so they will be issued a final kind of punch list uh, sometime within the next several weeks. And our goal will be to have everything bucked up uh, by mid-August. Uh, that will hold true also with Dalesgate for the work that was done last summer and HOH because those projects were substantially completed then, so we are finalizing punch list and getting those cleaned up this summer as well. In addition to the GAMS project this summer, we're going to be starting our work over at Gardner Town. We have a renovation project over there that includes um, those items listed in the report. There's a freezer cooler addition that's much needed for that school that will be um, installed. We're also going to be doing some upgrades to the fire alarm and PA systems. Uh, we have the Temple Hill main entry replacement project that will be underway. This is one of those projects that was identified by the district and their health and safety committee as something that needed to be repaired because it, it was in disrepair. That project is scheduled to start when summer recess begins and be done this summer. Uh, we have work that we'll be doing at MFA. There's some uh, masonry repair and some steel lintel work that's going to be done. That will allow the windows that will be replaced that face the pool courtyard to go in this summer. And that, together with some door replacements, will wrap up our work at MFA. I'm going to be handing out, when I finish my update, the bid results that came in for the North Campus Boys Gym Renovation Project. I'll give you an update on those bids. Uh, we have work to be done at HOH. Uh, for those of you that went on the tour last summer, you would have noticed some concrete repair of the structure that needed to be addressed. Um, additional work had been reviewed, um, and that work was bid, and that work will also start this summer. The Meadow Hill Track, we are continuing with the um, additional work on that field. We're about 50% complete. I will be speaking with the district this week to see if we might utilize the watering device that was purchased for Temple Hill to move that to Meadow Hill to assist with our watering for the new soil and seed that's been placed on that field. There's a fairly significant amount of information that's been provided at the back of your report that deals with our financial update on the $50 million and the 68 and then the 8.5 for the outdoor athletic improvements. I'll walk through those memos. Uh, finish the report. The balance of what's here is an update on upcoming um, meetings that we have scheduled for the district that take us through August of uh, 30. That's a general overview of the summer projects. Are there any specific questions with regard to that? Yes. Yes, Mr. Woodhull. Yes, Terry. Where do we stand with uh, Bales Gate with the structural equipment in the back of the building? We have um, revised pricing that we are looking at with the engineer with regard to how to address the swale. We also are looking at adding some additional um, drainage along the, it's the north side of the building where the playground, the play area is. Once that's been finalized, that work will be done and then the equipment will be, will be removed. Uh, it's been there quite some time. We've been trying to come up with the right solution. Quite frankly, we had um, pricing that came in that we weren't satisfied with, so we asked the engineers to take another look at it. We've been reviewing that with the superintendent before the president. So that work will be done this summer. Other questions so far for Mr. Damon on what he's presented? The first um, draft resolution I'm going to hand out is for the North Campus Boys Gym Renovation.
the uh, draft resolution, you'll see that we have um, the original low bidder for contract two had withdrawn their bid. They issued a letter to the district advising that they had made a, a math error in their bid and they had asked that their bid be withdrawn. Um, therefore, the resolution has been prepared to acknowledge that. Um, these bids were received and opened on June 14th. The typical interview process has been conducted and you will have recommendation letters in your packet for next week for the board meeting. Uh, there are two contracts that are being uh, presented. The first is contract one, which is the hazardous material abatement contract. Uh, this would be for the abatement and removal of the ceiling that currently exists in the boys' gym. Contract two is for general construction. Uh, Profex Incorporated has uh, done work in the district, and they are the second bidder. And given the fact that the uh, current low bidder had withdrawn their bid, this contract is being recommended for award to them. We provided a copy of the bid tabs. We did receive four bids for the uh, material, the hazardous material abatement contract. We also received uh, four bids for the general construction, one of which was withdrawn. And I provided uh, in your packet a copy of the letter that was received from the parent low bidder that had withdrawn their bid. Questions or comments on this? The yeah, next um, draft resolution I'm going to be passing out is for the K-8 alterations at GAMS. received and opened this afternoon, so there's a limited amount of information that's available. So what I have provided is a draft of the resolution. Uh, we only received one bid. As you know, we bid to a general contractor, and his price includes mechanical, electrical, and plumbing pricing. Um, attached to the draft, the draft resolution is a copy of the subcontractor breakdown that they provided. This will be formalized and we will be re reviewing each one of these in detail um, in advance of next week's board meeting. We've run a subtotal of the subcontractors that are provided that total 1.62052 million, leaving a, a balance of a million oh sixty two four eighty, which would be the general contractor's cost or that work that is either part of the general conditions or work that they would self-perform which is consistent with what they've done for the work that they're currently doing for the district at Kidney Ave and also the work that they have done at NFA and HOH. Yes. <coughs> uh, Mr. Damon, this is a sole bidder. Um, has there been any estimation of whether this bid amount is, um, a, is a fair consideration? Be That's something we're going to um, look at this week. Um, the we want to review each one of the subcontractors' prices to see that, how they align with the estimates that we had. Uh, we we are under a certain time constraint, if you will, because this is work that would start uh, later in the summer. Uh, that's something I did talk to the architect about this afternoon, whether or not this that would be an option. We will certainly look at that. And if we feel that that's the most appropriate and we have the time available that we could do that and it would not negatively impact the project, and that's something that we would bring forward for consideration. One of the things that we had tried to accomplish with regard to the exercising the district's ability to bid to a single GC and have them provide the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing subs as a part of their bid was to try to maintain continuity with the existing contractors that are in the building due to the overlap of the renovation work that was originally bid and started and the layering on, if you will, of the K-8 renovation work. The bid that was received was received from the general contractor currently working in the building and the sub pricing included are from those subs that are also currently, or the primes that are currently working on the job. So we have 
a good history there, but we do have uh, some work to do before we have recommendation letter coming forward or some other recommendation for the board. Other questions on this item? Okay. I think the last thing I wanted to touch on um, would be for those of you that um, have your reports for the OB and tab set, I'm going to go through this in detail, but I did want to um, share with you the information that we put together with regard to the $50 million referendum. As it currently stands, if you go to the final bullet, and it's also listed on the uh, next sheet, which is the proposed um, revised project budget summary. We've also provided draft resolution for this item. We have included in the packet uh, email correspondence from your bond council, which is consistent with the information that we were asked to um, discuss with them last year when we had a similar budget resolution uh, brought forward. So I've included that information. Bond council has once again looked at what we are proposing and their opinion and position is the same as it was last year, that the revisions that have been proposed are consistent with the language of your approved referendum and they are okay with the modifications as proposed. Um, that being said, the 50 million with everything uh, adjusted, it looks like we may have uh, about a $466,000 savings um, on this project, which we would look to reinvest at the district's direction at some point in the future. With regard to the 68 million and the 8.5, which we often refer to as the 76.5, there is still a significant amount of work that needs to be done. We provided a snapshot as of the end of May with regard to where we are. Uh, we will be updating this information now that we have the GAMS K alteration bids in and also the bids in on the North Campus Boys Gym ceiling. We'll also be uh, providing, as, as required, if you will, or requested individual updates on individual buildings. Um, there's, again, there's a fair amount of work that needs to be done here. But as it currently stands, um, we have generated enough savings through the work that we've done over the past number of years to be able to reallocate funds to not only cover the work that was done in South for the program changes, um, it appears based upon our initial review of the bid that came in this afternoon, we may also be in the same place to cover the cost of the K-8 alterations, renovations at GAMS with savings. And we'll have a better uh, snapshot on that as we go forward. But as it currently stands, it looks like the proposed um, provisions that we would be looking for action on at the next meeting um, should be included. And there's also a resolution that's been provided for the 76.5 million. Questions for Mr. Damon on this? The uh, last item I have, I think it was in our report. Uh, we, um, I don't know if this is something we were discussing executive session or we were discussing how there's a, there's a lease um, that the district is in a position that it, it needs to assume, and I'd like to talk to the board about how that lease may be utilized on a go-forward basis. Is there an issue regarding a negotiation or renegotiation of the lease price? Um, yes. Not an issue necessarily, but something that, that we need to discuss on the lease price. Well, if it relates to, to price and possible adjustment, then it would be appropriate for executive session. That would No other questions for Mr. Damon at this time? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Levinstein. All right, but just one question on the um, change order for South uh, A1. In a couple of places it's listed as 1,200 and in other places it's listed as 12,000. It's the same. Mr. Damon, um, from Mr. Samuel's office dated June 5th, 2000. 
2012 at the time. I'm assuming it's a car for it's 12, 1,207,902 and 12,207,902. I, um, I will check that and have that corrected for <coughs> next week's meeting. Which one do you think it is? I would, I would think it's 12,000. <laughs> Darn, okay. <laughs> we like 1,200 better. Yeah, the, um, that would be um, consistent with the pricing that we received for the other portions of this building. 7A was similar to that. 7B was, was the next section that we did. So I would expect that that's, that 12,000 is the correct number. Thank you for that. Mr. Besley, did you have a question? Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Damon at this time? Thank you, Terry. Next, next we have a resolution B to approve facilities project change orders associated with the group project. South Middle School renovation, Billsgate set one and set, set two renovation projects, and Gardner Town renovation project. Questions other than the one we just discussed on this? We'll be getting clarification of the amount. Resolution C is to award the contract for the district's capital construction project at Newburgh Free Academy North Campus Boys Gym Renovations. The bid opening was on 6 14 12. Questions? Resolution D is to award the contract for the district's capital construction project at Gibby Avenue Magnet School K-8 alterations, bid opening on 6-19-12. Questions or comments? Resolution E is to approve and accept the revised project budget summary for the $50 million capital project dated June 27, 2012. Resolution F is to approve and accept the revised project budget summary budget summary for the $76.5 million capital project dated June 27, 2012. President, the next item is uh, the recommendations from the committees on special education. Some of the students in six and seven are in the previous items, and we would uh, be able to um, uh, disaggregate the information and present it uh, in that way so that it could be ascertained easily. Okay. Any other questions on this? in regards to um, review of end of the year review for students IEP for their services for the following year? We are still in, in the process of uh, completing reviews and some initial evaluations but we uh, need to be ready prior to the start of the school year so we'll be um, 
conducting the meetings uh, throughout time during the summer to ensure that it happens in compliance with the timelines. Do you have any idea how many are left to do? Like, how many have been done? The total number, the number that are complete and the number that are left to be completed? Um, at the preschool level, we have uh, perhaps 30 to 35, uh, which uh, are in the process of being completed. And that's a, a long-term process because uh, new referrals are taking uh, place uh, constantly. At the uh, school level, uh, there are still some which need to be completed, and I don't have the number, but we can provide that, that figure. Yeah, I'd just like to see how close we are to being done, because I know this has been an issue in the past, and I know we have improved upon it, so I'd like to see that we're still moving in that positive direction. Yeah, we'll provide the figures then. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, item B is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Zycron Industries to perform Medicaid loss prevention and billing services. Dr. Marinica, do you know um, the cost of this um, agreement, this contract with this company? I know that inside it says um, they will receive 10% uh, performance fee. That is the cost, the percentage. That is the cost. Yes. So it, it varies depending upon how much we get reimbursed. I think go up or down. It's yes, not a set fee. If we don't do this, who does the work? Um, if we don't do, if we don't contract out to billing. We would probably have to hire a dedicated person to uh, uh, retrieve all the information, the documentation, uh, ensure that the documentation is in compliance with the requirements from the Department of Health and the Office of uh, uh, Medicaid so it's so, so they then this year did we hire this company that company has been providing services for the past several years yes there's actually more documentation mrs mcafee from the medicaid compliance committee meeting right and I'm, I'm, so um, I did, I <laughs> we missed you <laughs> so we'll be sure to provide that to you because it does clearly explain why this is the most cost efficient way to perform this service. And there was also some discussion um, at the, the Medicaid Compliance Committee meeting as to the way the state was reimbursing for Medicaid compared to the way that it's reimbursing now, and it doesn't just affect our district, it's across the state. Um, if you look back in past budgets, we were collecting lots of money because we were entitled to, for example, for a speech service, 400 and something dollars for each time the child was provided with this service. And now we're getting $42 each time the child is provided with that service. So there's a significant uh, decrease in the money that the district is receiving back for um, the submissions that we put into Medicaid at this point, and that's all due to um, regulations that have changed at the state level. So they can just change whatever they want, whatever they want. Apparently. <laughs> hey, David, what was the year that that changed? Was it 2010, 2011, or 2009? It was uh, two years ago that it was changed as a result of the um, penalty imposed by the federal government because of the way in which Medicaid and Greenpeace were being claimed and paid. So there were some errors at the state. I mean, the federal government indicated that the state had to pay a substantial amount or repay or refund to the federal government a substantial amount 
as a condition for a new plan which uh, the board acted upon several years ago by establishing the policy and the procedures for reporting on a quarterly basis. So that was part of the new plan imposed on the state by the federal government. That's on a statewide school district. Every, every school district in the state, not just Newburgh. Not just Newburgh. Yes. And, uh, we, and the report that we received today at the, the fourth Medicaid meeting of the year uh, substantiated that because, as you know, over the past several months during our budget meetings, we've had people stand up at the microphone and say that we don't know what we're doing, we don't know how to bill, and that there's millions of dollars out there, and if we knew how to collect it, we wouldn't have to make cuts. Well, that's not the case. It's not true. The, the rules have changed two years ago. The money is substantially different for every school district in the state. The money that we have received from Medicaid the past two years since the rules have changed is commensurate with every other school district in the state. We are larger than Poughkeepsie, we get more than that. We're larger than Middletown, we get more than that. But we are ratio-wise, every school district in the state has been affected by the rule change. I just want to make that very clear. It's too bad we didn't have everybody here that we had at the budget meetings. However, some of those people are here and they do hear what I'm saying. Thank you. Um, IMC, IMC is a resolution to approve facility use requests. Uh, there are four of them, Goldbacks Youth Football League, Newberg America Pumas, Quick Strike Football Club, and Start. And we have discussed those at the Buildings and Grounds Committee. We are still awaiting for information on number four, and that will be provided for in time for the next uh, board meeting on the 27th. In order that we can make an appropriate decision. Yes. I believe we have to confer with council uh, in regards to that. Regards to number four, yes. And that concludes my items, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Mariega. Our next item on the agenda is the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. Our first item this evening is a resolution to authorize the Superintendent of Schools to execute an agreement with the Mon and Fishkill for affiliation of the Education of the Nurse Aid Training Program for 2012-2013. <coughs> Questions or comments on this item? Next item is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with Capital Area School Development Association to prepare and facilitate on-site consultation to complete the 2012-2013 Comprehensive Education Plan, Funding Sources, Title I, School Improvement. Next item this evening is a resolution to approve three members of the NFA tennis team to attend a com and compete in the state championship in Flushing, Meadow, New York from May 30th to June 1st. Funding source, General Funds Athletic Department. Questions? The next item is a resolution to approve 20 members of the NFA track team to attend and compete in the state track and field championships in Syracuse, New York from June 7th through the 9th, funding source with general funds, athletic department. Questions? My next item is a resolution to approve one member of the NFA golf team to attend and compete in the state golf championship at Delhi, New York from June 8th through 10th, 2012, funding source, general funds, athletic department. Last item this evening would be for you to consider the conference requests and you receive an updated conference request form this evening. Thank <laughs> you. 
Christ to forge it. Our next <clears throat> item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Finance. He's not here this evening. I believe Mr. Lustowski will be reporting for him. Thank you, Madam President. The first item is a resolution to approve property tax refunds as a result of court orders. We all want to say no, but we know we're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Item B is a resolution to approve the bids. Uh, five bids um, include cafeteria paper and plastic, cafeteria student snacks, cafeteria grocery, cafeteria meat and frozen meals. And the last bid is for the 2012 extended school year and summer special education transportation. Questions or comments on these items? Item C is a resolution to declare library books, academic kits, and equipment surplus and obsolete and the authorized disposition of the same. Questions? Last item is a resolution to accept bills and reports. Thank you, Mr. Lustowski. Our next item on the agenda is from the Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through D. We have on the professional side, leave of absences and retirements. And on the civil service side, we have a retirement and college workers. Questions on any of these items? Resolution E is to approve the appointments for the city professional development, creating and managing literacy centers at GAMS. Funding source is Title I Part B for elementary schools. It's only a game. That's how that's selected to use their city. Resolution F is to approve the appointments for the development of the comprehensive education plans at Guinea Avenue and Horizons. Funding sources Title I Part B for the elementary schools. Item G is to designate individuals eligible for appointment depending on student enrollment and attendance to positions for the 2012 extended school year program. This is the appointment of the subs for the extended school year program. Resolution H is to designate individuals for, excuse me, individuals eligible for appointment depending on student enrollment and attendance to positions for the 2012 Extended School Year Program. These positions are for the proctoring and the scoring for that program. Resolution I is to rescind the board action approved in Resolution 0530112P Items number 10, 14, 18, and 22, and to approve resolution 062712I to abolish certain pedagogical positions in the district effective the close of business on June 30th, 2012. What this resolution is, since we um, took action at the May meeting to abolish and lay off, we've had subsequent retirements or resignations, so some individuals don't have to be laid off. 
So this is revising that action. Questions on this? Resolution J is to rescind the board action approved in resolution 0530122, item number 10, and to approve resolution 0627122J to abolish certain non-pedagogical positions in the district affected the close of business on June 30th, 2012. Again, this is the same thing. We've received a retirement, so someone is not being laid off. They are now retired. So this rescinds that action. Resolution K is to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a supplemental memorandum of agreement between the Civil Service Employees Association and the New Mar City School District dated June 13, 2012. This is the agreement between CSEA and the district that establishes the Wednesday through Sunday work schedule for the maintenance um, employees. So this is been something that's been ongoing for a while and it has signatures on it now, so it needs your approval and then your final Resolution L is to rescind 3020A charges brought against the district employee. Yes. Thank you all for being here this evening. 